YouTube and it takes a second. So I guess I'll just start talking. So we're here uh, with Katie for Microbit. We came back because we had some people who couldn't get in last time. So now we're broadcasting live. I hear myself. All right. So we're going live on YouTube now and we have Katie here. Oh, too many recordings. Uh, we're live on YouTube. We have Katie from Microbit here. Uh, I'm Colleen. I'm from Makey Makey. As I wore my Makey Makey shirt, so of my That's Banana shirt today. And we have Tom Heck here also from Makey Makey to help. And Katie, I forgot that I was going to send this to you. I found the weirdest, it was, someone posted it on Twitter, but the weirdest house in Pittsburgh. And it made me think of you because you still live in Pittsburgh. Hopefully it's in, okay, because it's the Pittsburgh part, not the weirdest ever part. <laughs> right, right. It's the Pittsburgh part, not the other part. All right. So if you're here from, from wherever you're from, if you say hello and where you're from in the chat, we would love to see that. We only have 30 minutes. We are going to share new ideas today, but we're going to kind of actually use the same project. So um, Katie and I were talking right before this. Oh, I hear myself somewhere. <laughs> Katie and I were talking right before this that one thing that is really cool uh, that we haven't really done is to share ideas. Sorry, I'm trying to close all the things that are beeping at me. Uh, to share ideas for projects, maybe an invention you've already made. So I'm going to share some new projects today uh, with my Microbit Power Glove that I shared last week. And Katie's going to share uh, new projects today with her sock bunny. And um, I also wanted to, before we go on to that, I wanted to say that uh, the thing that's kind of fun about that, the, the reason I thought about doing it, one was we're like repeating the webinar, but we want a new content. But I thought about um, John Lynch. Katie, do you know John Lynch? He is a really great maker who works in Boston. At, uh, he helps Susan at the Learn to Teach, Teach to Learn facility where they teach kids how to do stuff so the kids can teach other kids how to do things. And he did this Explode the Controller workshop at the Scratch Conference. Um, Tom, you were at that, so you, you should know John. And one of the projects he did involved Microbit and the others were uh, like he did the uh, the balance board project where uh, it, the micro bits on and it uses the tilt of the, the micro bit to uh, make a scratch game where you tilt. Um, so anyway, I was thinking of John and when I interviewed him, like it was one of the first things I did on this job that for Makey Makey, I interviewed him and he told me that he would sometimes bring the inventions and the kids would have to code a project to go with it. And other times they would uh, have the coding project already done and have to build an invention to go with the coding project. So I thought that was a really interesting way to chunk things down um, for teachers so that they might try with their students. And everyone, oh, I'm sorry, I did that thing where I thought I changed the chat, but I didn't. So there you go, Owen, you can all say hello to each other if you change it to all panelists and attendees. And if you aren't nice, we'll just kick you out. <laughs> All right, Katie is going to show us, you want to show us the sock bunny ideas? Yeah, I would love to. And thanks for that minute. I actually lost my connection. Can you still see and hear me okay? I can. All right, cool. So uh, it's great to be with everyone today. I want to introduce you to Pete, who has a really big problem. He has lost his beat. Pete has no beat, and we can use the micro bit combined with Makey Makey to help Pete find his beat in Scratch. Now, Pete is just your regular old sock bunny. He, there's really nothing that special about him. I just took a sock and I stuffed it with just any old cotton fill. You can take apart an old toy to do this or use some rice or something like that in a little baggie. But you just kind of put it into the sock like this, shape it out with a little rubber band. And then you, you have the start of Pete. So Pete is really just a little sock bunny with some foil glued on the bottom so that he can dance on the micro, on the Makey Makey dance pad. So just, just double checking. Colleen, can you still hear me okay? I can. I'm going to um, spotlight your video so it stays on you. Okay, excellent. So let me share my screen with all of you and let's see how we can get Pete to find his beat again. So Colleen, are you able to see my scratch window? I can. I Okay, I hope this continues to work. So let me just zoom in a little bit here. And Colleen, can you still see my video as well? Can you see Pete here? Yeah. Awesome. 
So basically, I just took a photo of Pete and I imported it as a sprite into Scratch. And that's how I was able to get Pete on this little dance stage here. So you can change your backdrops, you can change your sprite, very basic sort of Scratch activities. But I think he looks oh. really cute when you take a real world object and you put that photo into Scratch. So basically, as Colleen said, we're merging our technologies today. So Scratch has this really neat ability to add an extension. So right down here, I just clicked this little add button and you can see Makey Makey and Microbit side by side. So just click on each one. It'll bring up the little um, dialog box to help you connect your Microbit. Mine's already connected. So now I can go to the editor. And you can see I already did that process down here for Makey Makey as well. So just a quick little demo here. Um, because my micro bit has a tilt sensor in it, I can move oh, my wait. micro bit around. Yes, wait, 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 go. Oh, well, you were already connected, but just show them the connecting part because I think that's what we didn't do last time we did that and there were new people this time. So Absolutely. Uh, we did share in the last link and we'll share it again today. There, you'll do, You do have to have Scratch link already downloaded to your computer and on. And you also have to have put that hex file on the micro bit. But if you just... Maybe just click the little green arrow because to me that, well, okay. Yeah, you can this, click Microbit again. Oh, do you again. mean this, so this arrow yeah. right here? Yeah, because that shows you that you're connected to Microbit. If it has an orange, this is something I learned like last the last two weeks. If it has that exclamation point, then you're not connected. Uh, so if you want to disconnect it and show them how easy it is to connect it, if you trust it, if you trust your, yeah, you oh, should trust your Microbit, yeah. it'll work. I mean, I'll have oh. to do it in a second. <laughs> so you can see on my Microbit, right here that I, there's a little name scrolling across. So every micro bit has a unique name when you're pairing in Scratch. So if you're in a classroom setting with many kids, each child will be able to click now this little exclamation point and you will find the device V-O-Z-U-V. That's what's scrolling across my micro bit. And so now I can click connect. And you'll notice that after I connect, the name stops scrolling. So now I can begin to program the LEDs and, and everything else with my micro bit. So now we'll go back to the editor and we're ready to rock and roll. Awesome. Okay, cool. So now, as I mentioned, there's a tilt sensor in your micro bit. And so we can use that uh, to control any kind of movement. So because I clipped my micro bit to a little glove here, I can use my hand now waving it around to, for example, change the color of my sprite. So are you able to see that as I move my hand? Oh yeah. Change? Let's go ahead and add in a sound because color is just one way to make the beat here. Let's go in, um, add in a sound already. And now, can you hear that popping sound? I can. Awesome. So now we're starting to get Pete, he's kind of moving around to a little beat. He's changing color, he's making a noise. Let's break away though and start to get some more effect here with the makey makey. So as I mentioned, I've got some foil on the bottom here. So as I dance Pete around, Colleen, can you see my little dance pad over here? I can. So basically, I've just made a very simple little dance pad with a piece of uh, just a file folder and some foil. And now when I put my when I put Pete onto the dance pad, I can start to get some motion here. So you notice <laughs> Pete jumps when I press the space key. He's changing colors because I'm shaking my hand. But I can actually move him left and I can move him right as well. So final little demo here is just to go ahead and play some music. And you can, <laughs> I can help him start to find a little beat. Now you can imagine this activity. I doesn't have to just be dancing on a sock puppet, moving your arm. Imagine a whole body dance activity where you are moving the Sprite around by the connections you make on the walls with your own body, um, with other objects or with little stuffed animals that you make. So that, there are probably that's lots fun. of ways to help Pete find his beat and it'll be really cool to see what else you come up with. You know, what I love about that, it also reminds me of um, oh, uh, the, uh, we, did a, we did a webinar with Unruly Splats and Eric Turrell, the stem, I call him the stem in the gym guy. He's not the person who invented stem in the gym, but he might as well be because he started sharing these ideas with this hashtag stem in the gym and um, we all are like obsessed with them. But anyway, I always think of him when I'm sharing um, projects with kids and doing a design challenge and what you just did where you said, imagine the body movement. So if I had to jump and someone did this in your class, Tom, uh, where they had to jump to do uh, to hit a counter. So if they had to jump for Pete to jump up high and make that certain sound, like maybe they jump and it hits a symbol, 
and then they reach down low. And that's something that like, yes, the micro bit's going to feel tilt and feel jumping and tilting, but that's going to give you a different level of precision. I think that's a really cool mashup idea, Katie. I like Thanks. Pete finding his feet yeah. and, Pete. Uh, and Pete changing colors. Okay. So before you have to share your screen again, because uh, Christine asked how to put, how did you put Pete in your project? So if you would show that real quick, I think it would be really helpful. Yep. Absolutely. Um, can you see, actually, can you see my screen right now, Colleen? I can. How about right. you go to costumes and you can just do it all again and make a second. If you go to the tab, you can do a second, um, a second costume for Pete. We already yeah. have a second one, but just to show how to do it. Sure. So basically, well, actually where I really started um, was down here, I imported the image originally. So mm -hmm. instead of choosing a sprite from the scratch library, I just came up here and I uploaded an image. So I basically, this just gives you full access to your computer. You can choose a picture that you like. Um, I just imported the photo that I had taken of, of Pete. Um, and then like Colleen said, once you have that image imported, you can begin to do all kinds of cool things to it. And so let's see, um, if I just wanted to make another um, motion here, another costume, uh, I could right mouse click and duplicate. So now I have another one to kind of play around with, make sure I like what I'm about to do. And <laughs> let's see, I could probably just turn them around. Oh, so yeah, now, that's cute. Now when, okay, so now I've got two costumes, kind of a mirror image, and I want to delete this one out. I don't need that one. So if I go back to the code here and let's now move and cause Pete to flip between those two costumes. Uh, so I've got two costumes. Let me just see if this is the one I want. So I've got, okay, there's one and, and actually, okay, let me just, I'm right now, I'm just checking to get the two positions. Okay, so those are the two costumes that I like going back and forth. Now I want to make it so that, nope, I don't want that either. I want to use my A and B button to control this. I just want to keep it really simple. When I press the buttons on my micro bit, I want to switch the costumes. So... Here we go, A and B. And so now when I press A and B on my micro bit here, you see that I can make him flip. Oh, <laughs> so so you can, Pete is dancing. You can imagine now if I'm like, if I'm dancing with Pete in, real, in the real world and I'm pressing the buttons and shaking, you start to see this whole body interaction uh, to help Pete find his beat. And it's just a lot of fun. I hope that answered is, your question. That did, but you know, what's really cool is they're all asking how you still remove the background. So Renee asked if you use remove.bg to remove the background in your image. Joe mentioned that there was a magic wand. Yeah, if you like, if you upload one, I usually just upload it and erase around it like I'm old school Photoshop. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's actually exactly what I had to do because I took a terrible photo of Pete the first time and his background was all messy. So it was hard to just remove background. See if I can this remember. is cool. There's three different ways to do it. So remove.bg will remove backgrounds. Sandra uses preview on her Mac to remove the background. So everyone has new tips. You did that. There's Not, also an eraser tool. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I used this oh, little um, button right here. This is this little icon means to delete the image. Yeah. Like and so you can adjust the size of your um, tip of your brush here. So let me make a real big shape here. And what I did is I actually just took this eraser tool around my bunny. I just yeah. drew all around the bunny and then I erased everything away. So you and so I, we're doing it. She's using that. We're doing uh, it the hard way. Apparently there's like easier ways to do it. It's easier if you take a picture of your object in front of a simple background. And then there is a way to just select and remove to do that right there used to be a magic wand and i don't know if that's in the vector version or what so yeah i didn't see it before it might be there i had i looked up a youtube video uh Jerry oh i mean in Buddha scratch TV. yeah scratch yeah. two had had it yeah. i don't know about scratch three all right i just got myself plugged in this is the hard part i had to call katie earlier today and i was stuck to my computer um so someone also asked how you use makey makey so maybe real quick if you'll um, yeah. pull your, can you, now that there's no scratch screen in the way, can you share that uh, pad and we'll explain it a little bit? Absolutely. The and I'll spotlight you again. Super prototypey, everybody. There's nothing fancy about this at all. So this yes. is really what you're looking at. 
And so the makey makey makes it really clear what's what. So you can see like, look at the left and right arrow on the makey makey, you see those two yellow wires. Well, if you look at my dance pad, I have a left wire on, or excuse me, a yellow wire on the left and a yellow wire on the right. Those are simply the left and right connections. And the one in the middle is the earth or the ground connection. So when I was dancing Pete, I essentially was just completing a circuit. So when Pete sat here, he was connecting the right to the ground. And when Pete was over here, he's connecting the left and the ground. So he's dancing right and left. And then here to jump, that this one was connected to the space key and ground. So this was a jump and this was a right and a left. Almost like a DDR, dan the beginning of a dance dance yeah. revolution dance pad. It is, it's awesome. So thank you. That's, that's exactly what we needed, what they needed to hear, I think. So uh, if you weren't here last week and you didn't watch the recording, here's my Nintendo Power Glove that makes me feel, um, it's not a Nintendo Power Glove. It makes me feel like I'm wearing a Nintendo Power Glove and super awesome. And I've just rubber, well, I actually did sew the micro bit on and I just shared a tutorial for this on the Makey Makey page and on Instructables. Um, but I sewed the micro bit on and my battery pack is held on with this super prototype rubber band that also holds my alligator clips in place so they're not such a mess. And you can see that my micro bit is telling you its name, which is Tippet. And each finger is uh, connected to a different arrow key in on Makey Makey, and then Earth is on my heel. So I thought it'd be fun to make new games with this. Last week I shared a theremin. Um, this week uh, I went more literacy projects. So um, let's see. And I built these and they're actually, I told my husband today that they are my favorite projects of all scratch time. And I just pulled up, um, oh no, I hope I'm not ending a meeting right now. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, looks perfect. Oh, except I'm still spotlighting Katie. So let me stop. Oh, and great. actually before I share my screen, I have to show you this because, oh, well, I'm gonna show you this because one of the projects is based on this and the other, now it's hard because I'm showing you a book and a thing. So Katie shared two things, shared something with me last week that started it. And then this is a book that I bought my daughter at Book People in Austin, Texas. I'm gonna give Book People a shout out. It's the best bookstore local bookstore of all time you can um oh thanks tom hot tom spotlighted me and you can uh you can buy books from book people right now but you have to go to this thing you can buy books from lots of local bookstores i think it's called bookshop uh but this is called myth match and i have wanted to create a project with this um for my for for kids for like since i've had it so uh when you go to myth match it tells you the name, so here's the here's the dragon, right? And the dragon, it says, the divine mythical creature has the head of a mighty lizard, a giant reptile body and tail, and a covering of glinting scales. It can control floods and typhoons and snort smoke and red hot fire. But what's really cool is you can flip to another mythical creature and now I have a draffin and the words still read across like in a cool way. So the, this divine mythical creature has the head of an eagle. It shows the head of an eagle. Wow, you thought it was hard to do story time on a screen? Try doing story time on a screen with a magical power glove on that you're connected to the computer. Uh, has the head of an eagle, a giant reptile body and tail, so it's still the dragon side. Wait, let me just give you a whole new side. A crap, a capafin, caprafin, the celestial creation, has the head of an eagle, the scaly tail and fins of a fish, and fearsome sharp talons, and symbolizes wisdom and intelligence is renowned for guarding treasure. So I thought this would be like the coolest literacy project. You have to create creatures and you have to have writing that's gonna work when you flip left and right. So I made it in scratch. I'll go ahead and do that one first and then show the other one. We only have 10 minutes anyway. Um, so I made it in scratch. Let me go to my screen. And now I'm on, now you should see it. And, um, this is this story. So Monster Mash with Makey Makey and Micro Bit, and it's based on that book. And I'll go ahead and click on the C inside. And when you click it, it tells you what to do. Oh, but look, I'm gonna be not connected with Micro Bit. So also, it's probably gonna make a lot of sounds. So let me get my hand tilted just like I need it to do. So I'm gonna connect, tip it, and now go. 
It's already starting. All right, so my project is based on if I tilt the back half, oh, here it goes. And then I tilt the front half, and now I have a butterfly bear. I didn't get the name. I have to do the name part, I didn't get that. This heavenly creature has fearsome sharp teeth, the fluttering wings of a butterfly and devours baby animals. It can lure people to walk in a daze and is a vicious two-ton fighter. All right, so I'm gonna do another one. So I'm gonna do the back and the front, but I'm gonna stop. I got a dinosaur and a dragon. This creepy creature has a long twisty neck, the tail and wings of a dinosaur. It swallows its food whole. It preys on flying unicorns and the earth rumbles as it walks. Do you think I should do the voiceover in there too, you guys? Let's see if I can get a match. Ooh, I, I, you're getting the baby chicken because it's my favorite part. This farm creature has two antenna to help it locate food the body of a giant chicken, and it sucks out the brains of its prey. It symbolizes hope and will bring you luck if captured. That's quite a weird creature. So one thing that was really fun about this is it's not only writing. Uh, I actually did have my uh, kindergartner sitting next to me looking up on Pebble Go about some of the creatures, so about bears and about butterfly. And we, I wanted to put the proboscis of a butterfly because the butterfly has a proboscis that allows it to suck the nectar out of a flower. And how fun is it to take that and make it a monstrous thing that makes it suck the brains out of its prey. So anyway, this is my crazy project. And here's what I did. The code is actually pretty simple. When I tilt it back, uh, it's going to, this is the hard part. When I tilt it back, if I tilt back just a little bit, and then I tilt the front. It's trying to control those things. All right, so I have to tilt it back. Oh, I got the chicken! I'm so happy I finally got a match. I was trying to get a match. So if I tilt it back, it starts uh, playing the next, towards the next costume, and I put the sound just to, for fun. I could take it out. But I have it stop and point in direction 90. That's what makes it look correct, because I did have, oh, in my other project, I have them spinning. So the the other interesting thing I learned about Microbit is that no matter what window I'm on, while I have this scratch open, if I tilt my hand at all, it's going to start moving. So the Bluetooth connection keeps uh, keeps connected, which I thought was pretty amazing. I didn't know that that would happen. So um, I'm making sure. I think I might have. I hope I didn't spotlight the wrong video that whole time. <laughs> Y'all would have told me if it was in chat and I was spotlighting the wrong video, right? We can see the right to the chat. Okay, I hope everyone can. Uh, so here's how I did it. It's actually, uh, it's a, a game of matching. It's a really excellent writing project. I had a lot of fun. So if I wanted to make a new one, what I would do is I would actually go choose, I click choose a costume. You can click a new sprite here. You could upload things. Kids could do drawings they have, which would be really amazing too. So let's take the beetle. Um, and then I just took this, I think I converted it to bitmap. And I took this uh, selection tool to cut it in half. So I'm gonna cut its head off by selecting that. I'm gonna do control C to copy, delete it. And now I have the bug half, but I also have to make it match up with my chickadee. So let me get it there. Oh, that looks so cute. I'm excited. Now to write, I would have to write my whole scene right here. So uh, this vicious, I'm just gonna show you. I'm not gonna type the whole thing. Uh, I, I'll, I'm actually gonna write a guide on, on what type of words you have to put in both sides just to, just to share. But the words have to make sense every time. So pretty much this first half is like the type of creature it is. And on the right side in the front half, it has to be like whatever the head or the body is. Uh, and then the second line, I can't remember right now. Okay, so I showed you this. Let me click on front half. So let me go to front half. And now I'm going to make a new costume by painting. And I'm just going to paste that front half of the beetle. And sometimes it takes it a second to show up. There we go. And I'm going to move it again. There's probably a better way to do this, but this is how I did it. 
And it's really, uh, it's really kind of fun. It seems like a really fun project for kids. So then on my text, I'm going to start my text box somewhere right here. Um, what's a good fact about a beetle, guys? Burrows in the earth. So we can see that my text is funny right now. They're this amazing is, musicians. <laughs> Tom. Morning, dad joke. Tom. <laughs> uh, I can actually... I'm messing things up. So I'm going to draw that box around that just to move it so that it matches further down there by creatures. So anyway, that's that's how I actually did the, the project. I just chose them, but, but putting your own drawings in would be super cool too. So this project was something I've wanted to do a long time, but it also was inspired by Katie because last week she showed me this story starter guide from Scholastic. So this is their, your bonus because we're almost done with time here. Uh, where you spin all the things and then you click. Oh, that's just going to stop it. So I thought it'd be fun to also have a story starter project with this club. So sim similar idea. Uh, this is, I t I'll tilt. Let me hit start and make sure it's all listening. And I like to go in and make sure my micro bit's listening. Look, it wasn't listening. It must have turned. I hope my battery didn't die. Come on, tip it. Here he is. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's working already. So this is a similar idea to the story starter project, but I'm going to tilt. I'm going to move my hand like this, and then I'm going to stop each sentence. There he goes. Write a poem about a quick guitar that likes to play tag with. So I don't know. You're going to write a poem. Let's see what else we get. So I shake my hand to make everything spin. I'm going to cheat. I'm just using my whole hand to stop all of them because right now it's hard to, to show. Stop. Stop. I'm tilting my hand. Write a magical story about a quick. No, I don't want to do the guitar again. This is so hard to not move your hand. There, oh, why does it really like that guitar? Hmm. Let me hold this up so you can see the keys are being pressed. All right. So I'm shaking everything, stopping. I'm going to stop each thing with my fist. Write a poem about a small potion that likes to pretend. What does it like to pretend to do? I don't know. All right. Write a list for a quick dinosaur that likes to eat. So anyway, I thought that would be a really fun project too uh, for kids. And all I've done is coded each. I'm going to have to unplug the micro bit. Coded each tilt to start a different piece. So um, I coded each word. Uh, thing as a sprite um, and I thought it'd be fun to use visuals so that's why I use the character as just whatever um, sprite that that pops up there and I just have it changing by costume so this is just a pretty cool way to cheat the system here I could be doing different sprites but instead each uh, writing idea is here and again this is kind of like a really cool this would be a great way to even write a sentence like you could have the, the noun of the sentence, the verb of the sentence, adjectives, but it has to always make sense as a sentence. It's kind of complicated to do so. I think it's a really fun uh, way to play with literacy and coding and making. So here's all the adjectives and um, all the different characters it can be. Could have been a picture. That one never showed up. I like the llama. I think that's my favorite. So the code that makes it stand correct is this point in direction when it, when it hits that. So that, that makes each one stay level. So they spin like the randomizer and then stay level. So that's that. Colleen, uh, your, uh, this sort of reminds me of Austin Kleon's work around uh, blackout poetry. Really? I mean, uh, yeah, just kind of the- Kind of found um, writing. And also the surprise, like your, wow. your glove is, is producing a a surprise. And I think that that's what I see with Austin, you know, blackout poetry is when students start with that, uh, they're, they're looking in and piecing things together. And, and it's like, they end up with like, whoa, look at that. I just made a poem out of, you know, this, this magazine or, or uh, newspaper article. Yeah. Thanks. I think it's really fun. And I love blackout poetry. I love that thing. 
Uh, I'm looking at all the chat to see if I missed anyone's questions. You can turn off the blue connect, Bluetooth connection. I think the same way um, Katie did it in hers too. If I go over, I unplugged mine already, but I'll, I'll turn it back on and show you. Uh, is there anything else that people have asked that we're not answering? The only other question was just about the webinars each week. Is it new content or repeat content? Okay. Um, Jackie Tan did ask if there's a cut and paste resource to share with students for getting microbit connected to Scratch. Yep, I did post a link in the chat. I'm going to repost that link right now. Okay. And we, we did answer the question about the background. So I'll show you real quick um, how to disconnect and connect your micro bit again, just for those moments when it is a little bit cranky. So I can go to reconnect and it's looking for it and click connect. And the same way I've done that, I can also click disconnect. Um, so let's say I'm in it right now to find that disconnect window again. I have to go to the blocks that are micro bit blocks and click on that green check mark. Um, and now I can disconnect. And now they're not going to stop until I hit stop. But um, again, what's crazy is I could keep messing around with micro bit in my hand. That's why I had to stay so very still. It was still going to register it. So it's interesting to me that Scratch is still reading the Bluetooth because we know, Tom and I know from, from our work with Makey Makey so long that the key press is, it's not going to register a key press um, when I'm in a whole other window. So that's, that's kind of interesting. You could do some fun things with that, I think. So, all right, Fantastic. next week is actually going to be really exciting because I have taught um, our two inventors of Makey Makey, Jay, well, oh, now I'm trying to show you a Makey Makey again. So Jay Silver and um, Eric Rosenbaum are gonna join us next week for Scratch Month to celebrate Scratch Month. And the week after that, I don't know, but it's always gonna be new content. Um, I might close some of those off. I just did it really easily. It's easy to make the webinar for each week, but definitely next week, same time, um, Eric and Jay are going to come and just kind of share a little of the history of Makey Makey and talk about things. So pretty cool. And let's see, why do you convert the picture to vector? Oh, I did that because I wanted to put that selection box. So Scratch 2 didn't have the back and forth but it used to have this selection box. So it's mostly me learning how to, um, to use new Scratch photo editing tools. Uh, so I just knew I could put that box around it and then move anything, any piece of the sprite where I wanted. And that's, that's why I did that. So stink when you step on them. I don't know what that means. The Beatles. That was a fact about oh, Beatles. Oh, that's a really, but that is a good fact. That would have been a good one. Oh, there's too many things. So we'll share links again. We'll share recording um, afterwards. This is already broadcasting live on YouTube. And Katie will share her Pete, help Pete find his beat um, project probably on her own blog and we'll link to it. And um, and I already made the uh, the power glove guide, but I was gonna, I'm, I'll be working this week on the literacy aspect of what I just did. And that, it'll just be a, a, I've already decided I'm gonna call it scratch projects with the makey makey micro bit glove so they'll i'll put both of them in the one thing because just they're just kind of story starter ideas and writing ideas so awesome. thanks everybody thank you it's a lot of fun i wow, know you guys I love are these. awesome thanks these 30 minute ones are just super fun so thanks everyone for coming um we're all glad you're here uh and we'll see you again next week where we'll talk about breakfast tacos just for Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Colleen. Bye. Bye. Thank you.